What better bike to ride a load of downhill and enduro trails than the Cube Stereo Hybrid SLT with 170mm up front and 160 on the rear? And what better person to ride those trails other than the twice world downhill champion, Danny Hart. Danny, uh, thanks for inviting us to your local trails. It's a new pony for you in the fleet. Yes, it is. Do you use it a lot? That's the I key question. I've been using it a lot lately. Yeah, the trails are a little bit muddy. It's been a bit grim weather. So instead of lugging the, the normal bike around, I'd, I'll pull this out and we'll go and get a lot done instead of slugging around and... Slugging and lugging. Yeah, Otherwise, so this thing is perfect for it. Yeah, so I gather from this quick conversation, you actually use it quite a lot then. Yeah, I have been using it a lot. I think I've had it well, I've had it a few months now, I've done 200 miles on it. Whoa. It's maybe not as much as what some people ride, but yeah. um, I like to try and get on my normal bike also. It's definitely a good training tool for you then. It is, yeah, where on my normal bike I'll come and I'll maybe do four, five, six climbs. On this you can do 10, 12 and you, and you get all those downhills. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been really good. And you find it, a, you know, a, a significant physical workout? I mean, 12 runs is a lot, right? Yeah, I think if you try and do that in one hour, whereas on the normal bike, you could be out here all day long. Yeah. So, yeah, you come and you, you get the heart rate going on the climbs, you push on. And it's good, it's my first e-bike, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Ah, oh, cool. And then, of course, you can go back, feed the baby, change some nappies, put your feet up and watch some TV, right? I could do. I don't, but, you but don't. I could do. But what do you do instead then? Or do you not do? Mm, I try and ass assist in my wife and help her, but she's doing it all. She's doing a great job. I'm going to see a man who takes his responsibilities uh, <laughs> seriously there. I've got to wash it. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, when you ride these things a lot, it seems like you're washing them forever. Yeah. It seems to me you are washing it because you're using it a lot, right? Yeah. Um, Let's have a look at some of the details of uh, Danny's Cube Stereo Hybrid SLT. Now, it's actually got 27.5 wheels front and rear. It's a size large. It's got 200 mil discs front and rear. Now they're front and rear. Now they're Magura MT7s, but I looks Danny like they're specific discs on there, right? Yeah, they're a bit bigger, aren't they? Yeah. I guess these bikes. That's the one. Well, two things. I've had to put a new tire on the back and change the back, the rear brake pads because they were like almost through the metal. <laughs> you can get through the brakes, obviously, oh. that being a heavier bike. So you say you've got, you had to change the tyres, is that because you've worn out the last pair? Now you've got Trollby Magic Marys on there, front yeah. and rear. What's the case in? I'm guessing they're gravity The casing. back one's just a downhill one that I took out of my collection. It's an ultra soft, so it's probably not going to last too long. <laughs> uh, the front one is just what came on the pony. But Danny is a bit of a dark horse in the climbs, I think you'll find, so... Uh, I think how... you just need to figure it out. Oh, crikey, here we go. Uh, in terms of the wheels, we have Newman EG30s, there's an Evolution series. Um, those look like they're alloy wheel rims rather than carbon, Danny. Yeah, they are, yeah. Just like on my downhill bike, I just prefer the alloy. Uh, Danny, that crud mud guard seems to be doing a pretty good job of keeping the mud off the down tube there. Obviously a local product as well. Yeah, Pete Tompkins just down the road there in Whitby with the Crude XL Fender. Yeah. Now, obviously, as a Fox factory supported rider, uh, Danny's got Kashima front and rear, and also on the Fox transfer seat post, which is 160 millimeters. Um, it's a DPX2 air shock on the bike and an air grip to uh, fork up front, as I mentioned, 170 mil travel. Now then, let's go into the heart of the bike, which is the Bosch fourth generation motor, 85 newton meters of torque, uh, 625 watt hour battery in there, so Danny can get, what was it, 12 runs per session? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Give a spare battery. Don't need one. Ooh, I guess you're what, 62, 67, 68? 70 kilos? 69. 69 kilos. So you're going to be getting... Well, you could ride that thing all day, couldn't you? You can do a lot. We've been out a while now and I'm, uh, we've used... I can see here. three bars. So is this... You've got a Wahoo on here. Is that something which is part of the part of the deal with, with your e-bike? Yeah, I just started working with Wahoo and it seems good so far. Right. So do you know when you're riding it, do you get stats such as your heart rate and things like that? Yeah, I haven't like got that? my heart rate on today, but I would normally... Right. Put my heart and is that like part of your part of your training? Yeah, regime? just so my coach can see everything. Right. 
So your coach obviously builds the e-bike sessions into you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's good recovery, isn't it? So, and it's, yeah, it's good recovery and you're actually riding your bike, so. Yeah. Now, uh, Danny seems to have changed the, was it a Kiox display on there or was it the, or the, or the larger Nyon display? Nyon. Okay, so you've gone for the Purion display on the handlebar here. Yeah. yeah. Again, same, uh, well, not the same at all. There's actually less functions on here than what you had on the on the bar there, but obviously you're focusing more on the downhill runs than the... Yeah, to be fair, when I had it, I was getting quite into it with all the different statistics and how much different modes you're in, percentages, all that stuff, but I'd prefer to have this, you know, not so much yeah. stuff in your face. Okay, some numbers as ever. Now, Danny is just under five foot 10. Yeah, that's and right. he's riding a size large. Now there's four sizes uh, in this particular bike. We're looking at a 460 mil uh, reach, a 443 mil chainstay, 75.5 seat tube angle, and 65 degree head tube angle. Uh, in terms of the gears, there is obviously SRAM Axis gears in there, fully electronic system. So it's really neat on the, on the cabling up front. Actually, I want to point out the cabling because it's all very, very neatly tucked. Uh, into the head tube there, uh, as is the rest of the cabling, full internal cable routing uh, on the frame, which I didn't mention is carbon front triangle and a full carbon swinging arm. Danny, uh, can I leave it to you to go through some of the finishing touches, such as the water bottle and the pedals? Yeah, so we've got a water bottle here from, let's get it out, four gold. Smart that, and it matches all my Kashima. Love a bit of gold. And the pedals. Me my pedals, Crank Brothers Mallet E11. Are you convinced? Are you convinced that clipped in is the best way to go with an e-bike? I think so. Why would I not? I'm just asking. You know, I've ridden with like Fabian Brell and Eco Vulios, and they're like thinking, "Oh, there's another thing. Have you considered maybe doing? Um, what are you looking at? What are you looking yeah. at? What are you looking at me like that for? You're looking at something on me. What is it? Nothing, carry on, you're talking. Have you considered doing it? I don't it? think so, no, I have not. I don't want to. Why not? Because it looks even more painful than the normal EWS. Well, that's where you're right. It is a tough old business. EWS e-racing. Um, Danny, thanks uh, for showing us around the local spot. Uh, it's great to see you on an e-mountain bike. And I think I think increasingly a lot of downhill racers are going to be using e-bikes. I think e everyone right? is now. All the bike brands are doing it, I think. Uh, what's interesting about this bike, folks, is that there's been a discussion recently that a lot of e-bikes are going towards 29, 27.5, or maybe 29 front and rear. But I think the Cube is quite unique in that respect. And I guess for someone you know who's going to be hitting heavy duty trails, it's a great tool, right? Yeah, it's been spot on. It hasn't skipped a beat. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's know your thoughts of Danny's Cube Stereo Hybrid SLT.